So lawful access legislation or proposals has been kicking around for at least 10 years. Um, but the discussion really never went beyond policy circles or privacy and security experts. And I think what we've seen in the last year, a little less, has been uh, an increased public engagement in the issue. And so how can you, how do you think the lawful access report that the BCCLA did contributes to that public discussion? Well, um, we're very happy to contribute to the discussion. Um, we're pleased to reiterate some of the main points that in policy circles have been made, including the lack of evidence that any of this is required, the lack of proportionality, etc. cetera. Um, the two novel pieces, or the kind of um, the focus that we haven't seen so much highlighted, is one, the sense of countering the police argument, um, the government argument, that um, the scenario in terms of surveillance of the bad guys is really dark. New technology has allowed, a, has allowed bad guys to elude surveillance. Um, now, the reality on this is that there are some new technologies, so this is, this is how narrow this is, some new technologies in which there has been, um, has created challenges or difficulties in terms of wiretap. That's this one. New technologies writ large have actually facilitated surveillance unlike any we've seen the world over in the history of the world. So rather than saying new technologies are actually a detriment to surveillance, they've been the biggest boon to surveillance that we've ever seen. So keeping that sense of you know what's really in proportion here is key. And the second part um, that we highlight in this report that has really gone a little underreported is, hey, we're not the only people on the planet who've tried this. Other jurisdictions have expanded their lawful access um, legislation in ways that allows us, we don't have to look into the crystal ball, we can see what happens. So what we know, not conjecture, what we're told the good scenario would be, what we know is that there's no evidence that this increases the catching of the bad guys, and tons of evidence that it increases surveillance of ordinary people and surveillance of um, networks writ large. So keeping in mind that we don't actually have to guess, that we actually have other jurisdictions to look to, and wouldn't it be glorious if we decided to actually take this on as something that we wanted to use as evidence for um, you know, whether or not we should be doing this on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these are these are these are pieces of, of the of the story that haven't really been brought to light prior to to the last year, and, and particularly I think um, since the release of the BCCLA report. So, as mentioned, this legislation been, has been proposed in various forms over the last decade. When do you think we'll see um, the legislation drop? Oh, soon, <laughs> soon. And the reason we say that is not only has the government promised it mm -hmm. and said yes, it's coming, even though it wasn't in the omnibus bill, etc. But we're starting to hear those kinds of signals that let us know that they're gearing up for the campaign. Mm -hmm. And the campaign looks like, for example, um, the recent very large number of arrests for child pornography in Ontario. You'll notice that the police comments, reading off of a, a very clear script, um, you know, that story, over 60 arrests for child pornography, could be the story of our tools work. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that's what ordinary people would say. Mm -hmm. My gosh, the police are obviously on this. The police are standing back from that story and telling a different story. And their story is, we, we know, they say, we know there are 20 out there for everyone that we catch. Now, how they know this, we're not sure. But the point is that we're getting exactly the kind of setup that we started hearing before the omnibus crime bill when we had the epidemic of unreported crime. Mm -hmm. So what we're starting to hear from the government and the police is we have a lot of invisible evidence. And so this is obviously gearing up for the public debate about what really are the tools needful. Mm -hmm. And when they start rolling out the invisible evidence and their standard scripts, uh, then we're saying, yes, we can read the tea leaves here. Legislation's mm -hmm. coming. Coming soon. Well, and it's interesting because the critics of lawful access legislation in the past have have said this is not evidence-based legislation, that we, we can't see a, demo a demonstrated need for it. And I think that's um, part, of, uh, part of what we saw when the uh, Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police um, sent an email to law enforcement agencies across the country asking for evidence, um, cases or investigations where increased police powers would have been uh, would have helped in solving the crime. So they're looking for, for sort of this, this body of evidence that says, hey, look, we can't do our job. This is, 
this is what we need. We need these expanded surveillance powers, we need these increased police powers, we need less co court oversight. So I think that's very uh, interesting, and Open Media released that um, email, it was, it was uh, given to them, and they've, they've released it, so that was, uh, I think that's really telling about that there's really no need for this legislation. They can't find it, they haven't been, they haven't been able to find it in 10 years. Yes. Right. So um, maybe talk a little bit about the report and how it deals with security and cybersecurity. Well, this is another component of the report that we're very proud of because it's been sort of a, an under underexposed part of the lawful access story. And that is simply that if you're going to build in back doors, which is what this amounts to, for the police to conduct their surveillance, you're going to build in back doors full stop, period. Mm -hmm. And those back doors can be exploited by the usual exploiters. Mm -hmm. So the idea here is we're being told and this is not the first time we've heard this story, we're going to increase your security with these measures and in fact see some kind of undermining of security with these measures. This is a story here as well. Mm -hmm. From a strictly technological perspective, we are creating vulnerabilities systematically within the system that will impact virtually everybody, whether you, whether you identify as a good guy or a bad guy, a target of surveillance or not, we are simply undermining the security of all of our networks in order to build in the surveillance infrastructure. And for Canada, who has started to make a, a lot of noise about our cybersecurity concerns, mm -hmm. to be doing this without actually really taking on, in some kind of concerted, academic, rigorous fashion, what are the alternatives, what are the, um, you know, what are the ramifications of this from other aspects, is really quite damning, I think. And so highlighting the need for security, um, real security, technological security built into the system, and how this undermines that is another component of the report that we're very pleased to kind of shine a little bit of a spotlight on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what, what we're not being told by proponents of this type of legislation is that the back door is, is as you point out, for everybody. It's not just the back door for police um, in extreme circumstances when they need to catch these very terrible bad guys. Um, but it's uh, a vulnerability that leaves uh, that leaves the door open to, to hackers. And we just saw the FBI hacked the other day by Anonymous at a time when uh, the United States is, is considering um, some quite dramatic internet uh, legislation and um, and Anonymous sort of waves their hand and says, hey, we're still here, and, and by the way, we've been reading your internal communications for some time now, and, uh, and they release evidence of that. So um, it's, it's almost, it's, it's almost a, uh, an arrogance on the part of, uh, of the government to think that they can, they can um, build in these technological back insecurities and at the same time sort of tell Canadians that, well, no, we're actually increasing your security. Um, so what do you hope, just uh, by way of conclusion, what do you hope the report uh, will achieve or contribute, or, or, or where do you hope it will, will go? This is the kind of report that can be read by people who don't have a technological background, who don't have a legal background, in case there is one little dense kind of piece of legal legal analysis. We signal that. You can skip over the need <laughs> to. Um, the idea here is to educate people about what is happening uh, in this regard, and also we're very pleased to have this happen a little ahead of the game. Uh, before the uh, mm -hmm. legislation is introduced, because quite frankly, all of this could happen very quickly. And so um, the signals that we're getting about, um, you know, police looking for evidence that they've been asked for for the last 10 years, um, is citizens putting the heat on the government about this mm -hmm. by getting educated and being vocal. And we're extremely pleased to be contributing to that. Great. And so you can get the report at www.bccl.org. Download it. Thanks.